We're gonna talk about mistakes new parents make. Basically, it's gonna be mistakes I've made, but mistakes that I've heard now so many times that other parents have made them that I think it's worth talking about. First one is a story, okay? I was driving my daughter, this was nearly seven years ago now. Brand new mom, she's in the car seat. I'm with someone who's like a dad to me. I love him a lot. He's in the passenger seat. I don't remember where we were going or even why I was driving. I just remember that I took a turn and in that moment I heard the car seat like tip over and tumble and my look back and my baby's car seat is completely flipped over and Obviously, I'm like freaked out. I quick pull over. I check the baby. She's totally fine. It's as if nothing happened at all. She she was amazing. But then I'm so embarrassed and it was nerve wracking. And I, I was like, do I laugh? Do I cry? And the guy I was with was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure we did that too. It's fine. Don't forget to attach the base to the car and then make sure that the car seat that is like the separate piece is for sure attached to the base because that'll happen to you. I was like, that's terrifying. Hi you guys, welcome to this video. If you are a new parent, congratulations, you're amazing. If you are the type of parent who's already watching videos about mistakes other parents have made just to help you be a better mom or dad, you have nothing to worry about. You're amazing, this is gonna be great. But I am gonna share with you some of the common mistakes that I see happen in parenting. I lead an online community of parents, actually two of them. One's a membership-based community, that's a very good mother's clubhouse, and then we also have a Facebook Group. You're welcome to join both. If you're looking for community and support right now, I would love to help you with this stage of your life. But uh, yeah, in there, the point of this is that I hear from parents stuff they go through and I would love to be able to relay some of these things to you so that you can not make these mistakes and you can go ahead and make a whole bunch of other mistakes and then tell us about them and we can all feel normal <laughs> together. So that's one is whenever you do the car seat, make sure it is fully attached to the car and to baby. That way if you take a turn too tightly, then baby doesn't tip over in the back. I would like to tell you that I learned my lesson the very first time that that happened. I would be lying because the same thing happened, almost the same thing happened a few years later when I took another sharp turn and this time the baby seat didn't entirely flip over, but almost. So I, I have three kids and the honest truth is that this has happened three different times, so. Another piece of just super practical advice, when you are pushing a stroller through a doorway, common mistake we make is trying to like use our hands to push it open and then we go through. And easier way is back through doors. So whenever you need to go through, back it on up, you will get through the door so much easier. Okay, another mistake new parents make is we hold hot drinks above the stroller. So like a hot coffee we're drinking and then maybe we put it in the cup holder and depending on what stroller you have and how it, how it works and how sealed your cup is, if you go over a bump wrong and hot liquid comes out, it could land on the baby. How do I know? Because I've done it but I've also heard that other people have done it. So just be aware if you have a hot drink. What I'm not trying to do is invoke panic because we don't need to walk around scared all the time. But I'm just telling you, these are practical things we can be aware of so that when we have our hot drink, we just double check and make sure we're extra careful like if we're going down a curb. I think that's when I spilled the hot coffee on my baby. It was it had to do with a curb and going up or down. Another mistake that people make, this is like so, so common. I one time saw it happen before I was a mom when I was pregnant with my first and the mom was so relaxed about it. She's like, oh my gosh, this has happened to all of my kids and she had like four kids, is we let our babies accidentally roll off places like couches, beds. I heard of someone happen with a table. And these are like well-meaning, loving parents. This isn't negligent parenting. This is just, you're right there with your kid and then your kid suddenly, like a ninja, learns how to roll over and rolls right off. Or they suddenly, like a ninja, learn how to kick really hard and they somehow propel themselves off the surface and launch onto the ground. So good for you to know that that happens. It even happens when kids are like in the dock -a tot on the couch and then they figure it out and flip over. Just good to be aware of because it can happen. And, and I've never 
heard of a story and I hope that I won't ever, I don't need any comments of like, but I heard of a baby who this happened. I have never heard of a story where a baby was critically injured through this happening. So it is a very common mistake parents make. It is also remarkable how resilient these little tiny babies are. My own child rolled off a bed, one of them, two of them, two of them. Two of the three have rolled off of surfaces, I think both beds, and they were completely fine, thankfully. I was not fine, I cried, but they barely did. One of, no, I think they both probably cried for like a second and then they were just fine. What I'm not trying to do also is promote dangerous parenting or something for anybody who might watch this wrong or like take a little blurb and then post it on Reddit or something. Want us all to be really loving, caring, careful parents. And that's why I'm telling you things that happen all the time that good parents have dealt with and it's totally normal and it's fine. And you know what's really the harder piece of this? I mean, once you know your baby's safe, the harder piece is when who let the baby roll off the surface is not you, when the person is your partner. So you leave baby with your husband or you leave baby with your wife and then baby rolls off something. You know what a hard feeling is, is dealing with the inner turmoil of like, oh, were you neg negligent? Were you irresponsible? And then having to like sift through those feelings to be like, okay, this can happen to any of us. If I'm actually having a concern with you and I wanna talk through your parenting, we can do that in a different moment, not when we're both shocked and sad and trying to make sure that baby's okay. So just be aware of your baby when they are laying like a sweet little angel on a surface that is above the ground. It is possible that at some point they'll figure out how to roll off it and that's not the most fun. Not buckling your baby into their stroller. I am so guilty of this, do it all the time, where I just push the kids in the stroller. Actually, I don't do it all the time now, but I did do it all the time and I have friends who do that, where you just put the baby in the stroller and you don't buckle them because they're fine. They know how to sit in a stroller. Two things that happens. One is sometimes baby's bodies just sort of like shift down, even like in a swing. This has happened in a swing too. Yeah, their baby's like gravity and then their own little bodies like learning how to maneuver down. They sometimes can end up like dangling out of the bottom of the, the swing or the stroller. But then the other thing, this happened to me, which is actually what now makes me always buckle my kids into a stroller, is that I was getting off of a metro when we lived in Barcelona and I somehow like tripped and the entire stroller flipped upside down. It was actually really, really awful. Everything was fine, so I can talk about it like it's fine, but in the moment, it was pretty terrifying. Eloise, thankfully, was buckled in, and so she was being held upright while the stroller was upside down. Um, but then it took like a whole bunch of strangers to like yank and yank, and the stroller ultimately like broke and lost a wheel because it was attached under I can't even talk about it the whole way because it sounds so bad. It's real though. So my stroller flipped and got caught underneath the metro ledge. So like we're on the metro platform where you step in and out of the metro. The train itself is about to leap, but if it would have left, the stroller would have dragged. Can't even think about that. So I'm telling you without having to think about it because it's way too much for me. So my daughter was stuck inside a stroller that was stuck under the metro because the wheel got lodged under the metro. And so ultimately we, like a bunch of strangers, all gathered around. It was the, the best thing because I couldn't have done it by myself. All these people yanked my stroller and flipped it back upright. So I lost a wheel, like things broke off, stuff was flying everywhere. But my daughter was totally safe. The only thing she had was like a little mark on her from where the stroller, when it was upside down, her face was like laying on the, on the ground. Freak things happen, freak things. Maybe it's because I need to be more careful. I'm not sure. But what I can tell you is I'm thankful that she was buckled in in that moment because had she not been, that would have been a much more freaky situation. So just buckle your kids in the stroller when you take them for a walk. The off chance something really freaky weird happens they're safe in there. This one has to do with when baby first arrives into your life. So you get home, you have this gorgeous baby, you did such a good job, and you feel maybe pressure, maybe adrenaline, maybe excitement or enthusiasm, I don't know, but there's something that compels us 
to want to do everything as if we didn't just grow a baby, have a baby, now need our bodies to be healed and restored. And so we are up and doing all kinds of stuff. We're trying to maintain like making food, doing laundry, showering, cleaning, doing some last minute nesting. Now that baby's home, we want diapers over here and maybe a rocking chair over there. And we exhaust ourselves. But then when loved ones do want to help us, we don't receive the help because we think we've got it. Maybe we don't know how to delegate. Maybe we don't know how to ask for help or receive the help. My mistake that I see people make, and I was guilty of this too, is kind of a twofold of doing too much too quickly and also not receiving help or not asking for help when we need it. So the advice here would just be once you have your baby guys, receive all the help you can get and don't hesitate to ask for very specific help. If you need food, ask somebody for food. If you need someone to come and do laundry for you or sweep a floor, it, it is amazing what people are willing to do for a new baby. They love you, but they especially love this baby. And I know sometimes people come over and they're like, can I hold the baby? And so then it can feel like, oh great, someone's coming over just to hold the baby when actually I would love to just hold my baby and have someone do extra things. But maybe you could use your voice and be direct and say, you can absolutely hold the baby, but while you're here, would you mind wiping down this or running this errand for me? People will do it, they love you. And and if, 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 if you're in the rare situation where that's not the case, will you write us and we can brainstorm together how you can get help? I've been amazed at how internet friends have been made over the common need for help and people feeling alone. And so one mom here has written what her issue is and another mom says, oh, I can help you. I'll order you dinner tonight. And then friendship happens and mutual needs are being met. So um, receive help and really, really rest. It's gonna help so much. You've been through a lot and it makes sense that you're gonna need some downtime to recover and just be with the baby that you made. Okay, last one, super practical, super easy. I'm the queen of doing this wrong, so I'm happy to share my wisdom with you. Don't forget diapers, wipes, and an extra outfit for the baby, maybe two extra outfits. It is amazing how much these little tiny babies poop and it's also i mean beyond amazing it is like it's extraordinary it's something that belongs in national geographic the amount of poop that comes out and like the ex explosivity if that's a word like the directions it shoots and where you'll find it you're just gonna be so proud of your little guy at the um the strength the abdominal strength it took to get all of that through the body and up past the neck out of the neck hole into their hair you gotta be proud, that's amazing. So please do yourself a favor, bring extra change of clothes, extra diapers, extra wipes everywhere because wow, you're gonna really need them. And I thought I was done with that. I thought that now I have a two year old and a three year old, I was like, I don't need a change of clothes. These guys have got it. But then just a few weeks ago, I was traveling through the airport and my son, pooped his pants and it went all over and he ended up wearing Jules, my daughter. He ended up wearing her diaper because I had no underwear for him and no change of pants. So he just was in the airport with a shirt and his shoes and socks and a diaper as a big guy who doesn't need that. And um, yeah, well, I don't know how I ended up being the one making videos about this. I think if you just make enough mistakes, then you have enough content for a whole video and you can change lives. So guys, I believe in you. I would love to hear your new parent mistakes if you are somebody who's made any. And if you're a new mom or dad or you're about to be, congratulations, I'm so excited for you. If you're having a new baby or you already did, I'm so excited for you. I know I talk candidly about all of these mistakes and I don't wanna freak you out about anything at all. In fact, my heart in making any of this content is that you would feel more supported and loved and cared for as you experience this transformation that parenthood is. You are so good at this. And if you ever find yourself struggling and you're like, wow, this is really hard. I don't know if I can do this. You're normal. It actually is hard and you are not crazy, you are not bad at it. This is not that you are in motherhood or fatherhood and you just are not cut out for this. It's actually hard and it's going to get easier. But what you might need is some community or some support or just some random girl on the internet 
on her couch to tell you that you are normal and you can do this. And it's gonna be so worth it. If it doesn't feel worth it yet, just hang in there because it is going to be so worth it. This baby that you made, most beautiful gift of your life. There's gonna be other beautiful gifts in your life too, but wow, this one, so good guys. So, okay, thanks for being here. I'll see you soon. Uh, see you on Instagram if you want more of my family. Okay, bye.